Okay, so there are a lot of benefits to home ownership, such as tax advantages, financial stability, with the exception of, you know, assessing taxes, and just having a place that you can transform into a home that you love. But there are some things that I do not like about home ownership, and I'm gonna to talk to you about them today. So today's video is about the four things I do not like about home ownership. And I just wanna be honest and candid with you guys. So sit with me, I'm gonna have a little story time. But before we jump in, if you're new here, hey, my name is Jocelyn and I am the founder of Real Estate Prep, which is a community for first time, first time home buyers that are looking for the tools, tactics, and resources they need to confidently make the biggest purchase of their lives, and that is usually their first home. So my goal is to humanize the home buying process and give you all the tea that people are not giving you, okay? So again, the topic of the, the day is the four things I do not like about home ownership and the home buying process. So number one is that no one tells you when to turn your utilities on. <laughs> so when I moved in, I had all my utilities turned on with the exception of the internet, of course, because the builder was in here. You know, they were finalizing things. They needed to test the water. We needed all of that for inspections and the final closing. Um, but one day I woke up and the water wasn't on. And I said, okay, now wait a minute. Let me go through all my paperwork and see when I need to set this up because they didn't explicitly make that clear. I knew I would need to transfer them over, but there wasn't a clear communication process, a clear transfer process. So you're gonna have to do that work you know, on your own. Like if you're expecting for someone to do it the way that you, they will like in a apartment, don't do that. You know, think ahead <laughs> because water, electric, gas, all of that is now in your name. So do not wait, make sure you over communicate and you're clear that this needs to be turned on immediately. Number two is that there is more maintenance. And so I decided to write a list of the things that I've already purchased. I mean, I've been here for a while, but in the very beginning that I had to purchase. So air filters, those are essential because you wanna make sure that there's good air filtering through the home. You need that circulation. Like you need it even more th now than in an apartment um, because that helps, especially as a new build, that helps to maintain the structure of the house. A water hose, cause you may or may not have a lawn, you know, lawn care, which can be a lawn mower, a trim measure, or hiring someone to do it. Uh, a refrigerator, you know, a freezer, common common things. You need to keep your food stored. You can't expect sellers to give you that. Like, make sure that that's explicitly clear if they decide to give it to you. And a washer and a dryer. Some people, again, get this. I did not get that. I had to buy everything from scratch. And this is another pro tip, a bonus tip on top of number two, which as it relates to maintenance, is that you wanna make sure that you know the connector the type of connector you have for your dryer. So when I initially checked and when I did my final walkthrough, my builder told me I had a gas connector. I want a gas because gas is cheaper. No, I did not have the gas connector. I ordered the dirt gas dryer. The gas dryer got here. They said, oh no, we cannot do anything with this girl. You have an electric connector. You need to send this back and get electric. So now I have more weeks that I cannot use a washer and dryer because I don't have a connector. So I'm at family and friends house washing clothes, which is a first world problem. But still, you would just wanna make sure you double check that, you know, and triple check it, honestly. Like again, I went off the word of my builder, but I needed him to show me exactly. That's what I recommend you do next time. Have them show you exactly um, what it is, what it is, what it is. Number three is that your mortgage will move around if you have a conventional loan. So I think I broke down in another video the difference between FHA and conventional, but FHA is essentially backed by the government. It's connected through HUD, which is the Housing and Urban Development, which is a whole US department, sort of like the Department of Commerce, versus conventional, which can be serviced through a bank, a credit union. It's essentially private lenders, you know? So I went the conventional route and my loan has transferred so many different hands. <laughs> You know, I'm just, at this point, I'm just used to a, a new adjustment every three months or so because that's how it's been. Um, and I used to be very shocked about that. I think I even re reached out to my agent when it first happened. And I'm like, girl, is this normal? And she was like, yeah, it's pretty normal. So she explained how it worked. Um, so if you do go conventional, don't be shocked. Usually they will communicate with you. And actually the second person that I had landed with, because it's been so many thus far, I actually liked them better than the person that I had closed with because they had a better online intuitive process. And I was able to kind of track when things were due easier versus having to call the first, you know, lender that I had, the first uh, loan services that I had. Like, 
I'm like, how, why am I chasing y'all to give you my money? Like, make it make sense. <laughs> but anyway, um, that will happen. You know, your loan, if you go private, which is conventional, it will move through different hands and that's completely normal. But number four is that HOA will stay on you. So, and you will stay on them. I'll say that HOA will stay on you and you will stay on them. I have stayed on them because this is really me telling y'all my story. So, and a good example of something that they stay on me about is my lawn. So there are a long list of rules and regulations and policies and things that you have to follow. Similar to like a leasing contract, you know, but this is a subdivision. Like everybody has to adhere to these rules. And one of the big things that they're adamant about is lawn care. So I've gotten letters, I've gotten emails basically saying, hey girl, it's time to mow your lawn again. And I'm like, first of all, I'm gonna need for you to get out of my business. <laughs> But, you know, they want to maintain, you know, I guess the value, I don't know what they're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to flex. Like, I don't really know what the rule is, but I get it. You know, they want everyone to have a cohesive lawn. Um, and if I think about my block, half of them actually adhere to it and the other half do <laughs> And I bounce between the two, you know, but if you're watching this, please don't judge me. Um, but I just feel like, you know, lawn care is expensive. Either I have to get out there and do it, I have to have a family member come out there and do it, um, or I have to pay. And it's just like, sometimes I don't want to do none of that. Like the lawn doesn't concern me, the inside of the home does. But they will be on you about it. So make sure that, you know, you adhere to whatever they request. Um, Cause if not, they will find you. And then on the flip side, I was on them because my name was not in the call box for the longest. And I'm like, first of all, I'm paying y'all too much to have to chase you to get simple things done. And then they put it in there and then they took it out. So I had a friend come by and he's like, um, what's going on? <laughs> what's going on? Your name's no longer in the box. Like, can you come get me? And that is an inconvenience for me. Like I'm paying for convenience. So I'm on them, calling them, and it just gets very frustrating. But like, you really have to be on top of your HOA because your HOA will be on top of you and it's really low key and abusive relationship. But it's all about just maintaining the stability and consistency of the neighborhood. So those are the four things I do not like about homeownership and that really frustrated me in the very beginning. But now it's just like, you know, the pros really outweigh the cons. But just to recap you, take you around the block one more time. Number one is that you need to turn your utilities on immediately upon moving. It was an interesting situation for me because the builder had everything on, but they cut that stuff off with the quickness and I woke up with no water. <laughs> Number two is that there is more maintenance associated with homeownership. Do not let these people lie to you. The good news is that if you budget effectively, some of this can be outsourced, such as lawn care. Um, I just spent a long time complaining about that. Um, but again, air filters, water holes, washer dryer, you know, and just even maintaining the house, you know, like lights and, you know, garage doors, you know, all that stuff just gets very annoying. <laughs> Number three is that your mortgage will move around a lot, meaning the servicer um, will adjust and move around a lot if you go conventional. Um, I am, um, I have a conventional loan. Um, it's a little different on the FHA side because that is government backed. But don't be shocked. I was a little shocked in the very beginning, but now I'm like, okay, who wants the loan now at this point? And then number four is that HOA will stay on you about adhering to your rules. And again, I gave that example about my lawn care. Um, I'm not as on it as I should be. I'm honest about that. They're clearly well aware of it, but they everybody gets these letters. I've already asked my neighbors because their lawn looks like, oh, and I'm like, okay, we all on the same page. It is what it is. So, you know, they will be on you, but you also will make sure that you need to be on them because there will be things that pop up that you don't know and you need to make sure that they know and they're aware so that they can address it quickly. So comment below and let me know which one of these may have been a shocker to you. Um, or if you wanna learn more about one of the things in particular, please let me know in the comments. Um, and then let me know whatever, what other, what other types of videos that you'd like to see on the channel um, because I want to make sure that I'm speaking to the things that are of interest to you all and I do my best to give my honest um, experience, you know, my honest feedback, but I want to make sure that I'm capturing the things that are heavily on your mind as well. Um, so again, please leave some feedback, leave some comments below about things that you'd like to see. Um, thank you for watching. Please visit my website, social media, all of that stuff. Um, and I will see you on the next video. Bye.